First thing you want to do when you're uh, going to uh, remove the uh, fuel pressure regulator is take this cover off. There's four 10 millimeter bolts that hold it on each four corners. I've already taken the bolts out so it just lifts off. Next thing you're going to have to do and um, this is only, like I said earlier, this is only on 99 uh, version of this engine. Um, this car is actually a 99 Acura TL. On 2000 to 2003 um, they actually put the fuel pressure regulator onto a junction box um, near the firewall I believe and then again Honda changed it again in 2004 and they put the fuel pressure regulator inside of the fuel tank um, near the uh, the fuel pump so you only have to take this intake manifold off on the 99's so keep that in mind bolts here that are on the throttle body four 12 millimeters yeah four 12 millimeters two of them are bolts and two of them are studs. I'll show you that when we get down to it. And then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine 12 millimeter bolts down here that sit inside the intake manifold that you have to remove as well. So, um, and there's some lines back here, sensor right there. But uh, you don't have to take the whole throttle body off for this whole snorkel away. All you have to do is remove the bolts here. There's an O-ring that sits between the top of the intake and the throttle body. I'm going to reuse it if it's not damaged. So you, typically you can save those. So uh, first thing I will do is take the bolts off on this side. Two of the bolts are on top. One is here. One is right there as well. And there's two coinciding ones on the bottom side. So uh, hopefully you guys can see that. There's one right there, and then if you were to imagine on the other side of the corner, there's one there. Um, two of them are bolts, two of them are nuts, so uh, just remember where they go. And um, they're 12 millimeter, so I will take those out right now. That one's loose. Take that connector away. That one's loose. Come down here on the bottom side. That one's loose. What you're looking at right there is the last bolt. It's in the um, bottom corner closest to the firewall and we'll get that one loose too it's a little awkward to get to but I'm, what I'm doing first is putting the socket on with the extension and right now putting the wrench on the end of it to break it loose Take the ratchet off and just spin the extension and socket by hand here. And it's hitting on something actually. So I'm just going to leave it there. It's hitting on this little ridge. I'm just going to leave that in place. Leave it right there. It should clear the intake manifold. And as you can see, the it's a bolt as well. So I'm going to try to pull the camera out and you can see exactly where I was at. So as you can see I was down here. The two lower were actually bolts. The top two are nuts. 
So just keep that in mind. You really can't screw it up, but just so you know and you're aware of it. So there we go. Yeah, there, see? It's loose. Yep. So I don't have to mess with any of the throttle body. I don't have to mess with the linkage for the throttle, the butterfly valve. I'm not going to mess with any of the hosing or the connectors except for this one that I disconnected. And uh, once I get the intake loosened up, all nine bolts, I should be able to just slip this thing out and be free and clear of it. Sitting on the back side of the plenum, there's a connector here that needs to become un that needs to come undone. Just a squeeze clip. And it comes right off. There, right there is where you squeeze it on the back side. It pops right off. And there's these hoses you need to contend with. They're uh, put in place by two 10 millimeter bolts. So I'm using a 10 millimeter gear wrench. To get this loose. Sides loose. Okay, got that bolt out. And this should just slide out. I mean, very careful when you pull this thing out. There's a little steel gasket back here. And uh, I was able to save it right here. Right there. Just make sure you don't lose that back there and make sure you put it back in when uh, it's time to install everything. I have you sitting here with me. Uh, here are the nine bolts I was talking about earlier. Hopefully you can see those clearly. They sit right down in there. Once again, they're 12 millimeters. Loosen them all up and get them out of the way. So I'll speed this up for you so you're not bored with what I'm doing. Set those aside. Now keep in mind, three of these have studs, so three of them are bolts, or 12 millimeter bolts. It's kind of hard not to uh, see them and forget where they're at, but just so you know, there are three, uh, three 12 millimeter bolts that are on this intake manifold as well. With the bolts and, and nuts out of the way, you should be able to pick this whole thing up as an assembly. Make sure you have this disconnected back here, the hoses the sensor back here as well and that you have all the two bolts I mean the two studs yeah the two bolts and the two nuts here as well make sure those are all taken off you don't need to disconnect anything else up here just leave that alone this there'll be a gasket in here as well make sure you don't lose that before you take this off as well and if it's ripped or torn this is a good time to replace it or you'll start throwing check engine lights so what you want to do is basically take your hand here, your left hand, pick this side up a little bit quicker than you pick this side up. This whole assembly, snorkel, I know this is different than stock. This is an AEM aftermarket cold, in air, cold air intake system. So if you don't have this, you might have to remove some of this stuff or you know make move, move some clips out of the way. I, I'm sorry, I apologize that this isn't stock so I can show you exactly how to do it. But just know that you don't have to take all this stuff off to get the intake manifold off alright you might have to m remove some clips and hose some hoses and some other stuff but you typically don't have to mess with the throttle body so as I was saying take your hand lift this side up off the studs get that clear out of the way and then walk it to your left alright we have one hose back here that I've forgotten about I don't see a clamp so I just pulled it off with my hand. There you go. It's clear. Don't drop this. Set it over the side very gently. I'm setting it, setting it on its back. 
so that nothing happens to it. Right in here is the gasket. Right there, so I'm going to just leave that there. And this is what I needed to get to. The fuel pressure regulator. Right here, that's the fuel pressure regulator. There's a hose right here, a vacuum line. There's no clamp or anything, just pull that straight off, straight back. On the other side here, there's a small little hose clamp that I'm going to use these uh, curved pliers on to clip this off. Hold down the clamp. Twist that back and forth a little bit. Get that out of the way. So I can remove the hose. Okay, moves a little bit quicker than I wanted, but hey. Move it down a little bit more. Okay, there. It's out of the way. Now hopefully I'll be able to get this hose off by hand. Sometimes you need to come in with like a radiator tool, radiator hose tool, and get it off. Sometimes they're brittle. So I'm just trying to work a little bit. I don't want to crack it. It is brittle. So I'll bring, come back in here with the, the pliers, twist it a little bit, break that seal if there's any kind of rust or grime or grit down there. All right, cool. All right, be very careful when you do this. There is fuel in these lines, in one of the lines at least. This one right here would be your fuel line. This one right here is your vacuum line. So be very, very careful. What I did here, I laid down a towel because you want to cover these holes that lead right into the intake. You want to cover those up so you don't get grime or you know dust, dirt, debris down in there, or lose a bolt or your mother-in-law, or just keep it uh, keep it clean down there. Also, um, don't forget to uh, to remove this towel before you put everything back together. I've seen guys doing head gaskets, and uh, they put a towel down there to. Um, protect the cylinders and they're in a rush or whatever it's lunchtime or it's Friday afternoon they end up putting it all back together with a towel still in place and it gets sucked, sucked through the engine and comes out the exhaust or worse it you know bends a rod or throws a rod or does something bad so just remember to take that out of the way before you do it next thing to do will be to remove this old fuel pressure regulator this nut right here is what holds it onto the fuel rail and it's a 17 millimeter so Shouldn't be on there very tight, so we'll just go ahead and loosen that up. See, back that up all the way and just carefully spin it out. There you go, there's the old one. You see, you have a nut right here and kind of a brass washer here as well, and then right at the end is a o-ring a rubber o-ring so uh, just showing you exactly how that goes together in case you're wondering also another thing to note is exactly not exactly but the um, the vacuum line on the end right here this one was facing directly back parallel to the ground so it's facing directly back towards the uh, firewall and then the one for the fuel is kind of at a 45 degree angle kind of like that facing towards the firewall as well a little bit more towards the ground so just so you can line up line up your hoses. Here's a new one. I got it from O'Reilly. So uh, it was about a uh, it was about $105. Everything said and done. It came out with tax. It came out to $115. But uh, that's because we live in California and they tax everything out here. Anyways, um, when you uh, key thing to remember here is when you actually purchase this, whether you get it at a store or you go online, uh, make sure you um, tell them specifically what year this is for. From 2000, I mean from 99 to 2000, it actually changed. There's different PSI ratings on this uh, on this particular one, and the year above this to 2000. So uh, just make sure you get the correct one because if you don't. PSI rating will be different, and you might run into some awkward, weird, you know, drivability issues, problems, if you don't get the correct one, so just keep that in mind. So, here's the new one. Looks pretty much the same as the old one. It has two caps right here. One for the fuel. Another one for the fuel. There's your vacuum line. So, 
I'll go ahead and put that away. I'm going to push this nut all the way down. Get that washer down and then uh, put a little bit of oil on the O-ring. So, use my trusty handy oiler there. Like always, I'm using Mobile One. Move that around a little bit. Okay, go ahead and start spinning it into place. Be careful when you do this, don't cross thread it. You should always start bolts and nuts by hand. I don't really care what anybody says. I've seen a lot of guys screw up a lot of stuff by uh, trying to rush and get it done by a air tool. So, Okay, go ahead and get that in place. I'm going to get my 17 millimeter. Run that down a little bit. Snug. Very snug. That's all I can say. This is aluminum. This is basically a made out of a tin, not a tin can, an aluminum can, a beer can, so snug. Okay. There we go. Okay. I'm going to have to make some adjustments here. Okay, move that. Loosen this up a little. So bring this back around. So basically what happened here is I did not get this, the vacuum line is not getting down far enough or rotating far enough down to run parallel to the ground so I need to figure out why and how I can get it back. It needs to be like that. Turn it here. I just need a little bit more room, man. Now I'm afraid if I move that nut, and that's already all the way backed up, so I guess what I'm going to have to do can I get any more from this line? No. So I'll bring this back. I hate to do this. I really hate to do this. And so I can move the nut forward and have it contact the fuel rail sooner, but then I don't know. What I ended up doing here is, here's a new one, here's the old one, and I screwed it all the way down. It was just a smidgen off, so I basically took a pair of uh, channel locks here, put it here, and just tightened it down just a, just a little bit, and got it to rotate. Um, then I put the wrench on here to snug it up, but it's already snug with the rotation of this, so everything looks like it should fit now. So let's see if I can get the old line on here. Bring in the gas line first. Okay, that's on. I got my handy dandy vacuum line here and uh, go ahead and line that up. Okay, that that's on. Double check on the bottom side. And that's on. So now I will take my pliers here and bring up this clamp, bring it back to place on the fuel line. I wish there was a way to start the vehicle and double check my work before putting the uh, intake on, but there isn't. So make sure that gasket's in place. And we'll start putting everything back together. And make sure you get the towel out of the way. Okay, double check your hoses. And uh, 
make sure everything's out of the way. Double check that the vacuum line is here secured, and then on the bottom secured too, there's a metal line that comes up and uh, connects to this rubber hose, so just make sure that's in, in, in place. You have a clip here for the gas, for the fuel line, so make sure that's in place as well. Double check your nut, I've already done that, so it's good to go. Remove your towel, and then double check your gasket, make sure that's in place as well. Um, double check your gasket on this side, and mine is actually on the upper intake, so let's bring that in now. Okay, kind of the same way we brought it in, or took it out I should say. That's how we're going to bring it in. I'm going to start by here, lead the studs into the throttle body. Those, those glide in, and then make sure that's secure. And just I kind of eyeball your bolts here, and uh, sits back in. Okay, cool. That connector in and uh, make sure you bring your gasket in here on this side. There's actually only one way that this will go, so go ahead and do that. I'll bring a bolt in on this side to hold the gasket in place and then start it here. Actually put both bolts in. Line it up here. Careful those holes. Okay, got those started by hand. I'll run those down. There's no torque spec on those, just uh, get those run down and snug it up. That side is snug, and we'll do the other side real quick. Okay, cool. All right, next thing to do will be to drop in all the bolts, and then take manifold. So go ahead and drop those down in. I'm just dropping them right now, and I'll start them all by hand. Make sure they grab. Make sure they're not cross-threaded. Okay, starting. You can feel when they grab. this, run them down, there is a torque pattern to this as well as torque specifications which I will show you in a second after I run these down. Keep in mind, you know most guys if they're in a shop, dealership or an independent garage, they'd probably be using air tools now or cordless tools and uh, all that fancy dancy stuff from Matco and Snap-on and Mac and Cornwell and DeWalt but what I'm showing you here is the fact that you don't have to use power tools to get this job done. You can use regular old socket and wrench to perform, to perform this job. So I don't feel like you have to go out there and Spend all kinds of money on tools. You'll probably only use every once in a while. Now the three bolts. Three bolts right there. There's one on this side, two on this side. Okay, they're all run down. Okay, here's a shot for the manual. The torque, uh, the sequence in which you need to torque the bolts down. So just follow it around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The torque specs for the bolts are 16 foot pounds. 16 foot pounds is not a lot of uh, torque, but uh, it doesn't need to be for this. So the first one to do. There's the one in the center, the one second from the left, this one right here. So 
go ahead and bring this down to 16 foot pounds. Next will be this one. One to the left of the first one, number three. Number four is back this way. Down and to the right. Number five is right up here. Number six is over here. Number seven is all the way over here on the top with the bolt. Number eight is right below that one. And number nine is the one farthest away on the far left, which is a bolt. So then I will go through and just double check, starting with number one. One, good. Two, good. Three, good. Four, good. Five, good. Six, good. Seven, eight, nine. And the reason why you want to torque that down is um, it puts a certain pressure onto the intake manifold, which allows... Um, air not to escape and um, keeps air from getting out or having a vacuum leak I should say so uh, you don't throw any codes. So the next thing you'll do is to uh, button up the throttle body here. Two studs on the top, two bolts on the bottom. Go ahead and reconnect this connector here and let's put those, those back on. Start that by hand. Start the one over here by hand. Well, that one is still down there because I couldn't get it out, so still in place back there, hopefully. That one started and reach here on the back side. Yep, that one's still there. So now we'll uh, tighten these down. Just snug, doesn't have to be tight. Make sure there's no gap here. Double check my connector here, which is good. Here, here is good. And then uh, I'll fire it up. Make sure everything's good to go. Okay, I uh, put all four, uh, two bolts back in and uh, the two nuts on top. Put those back in, put the connector back in. I'm going to leave the cover for the intake manifold off at this moment. I'm going to fire up the vehicle, make sure it's running properly. Um, when you do this, Anytime after you open a fuel system up, it takes a you know a couple turns to a um, couple turns of the ignition for the uh, fuel pump to prime the system and get fuel back up into the injectors and then the fuel rail because it's all bled out. So what you want to do is turn the key to the on position without starting the vehicle for about six seconds. Shut it off for about ten. After the ten, put it back into the on position without starting the vehicle. Wait another six. Shut off for about 10, and then go ahead and try to fire it up. That way you prime the fuel system. Okay, shut it off. seconds. Maybe you guys can hear the fuel pump running. Okay, shut it off one last time. Count to 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This time we're going to fire it up. Why does it sound like that?
Well, that sounds like a vacuum leak, so I obviously forgot to hook up something, and I can see it right now. So don't pull the same mistake. This line right there. Yep, there you see. Forgot to put that line on. So don't forget to put this line on into the intake manifold. I forgot to do that, that's why it sounded like that. She sounds beautiful. She sounds purdy. Nice and purdy. Alright, let's put the cover on. Install the cover. There's only really one way that this goes. This notch right here will be the part where it goes over the throttle body, so Go ahead and lay that down. Just put that in place like that. And uh, what I like to do is start these by hand. Just make sure that they're started. You can always look down to the center and make sure they're started. If you start the two corners, you know you're lying on the other two. And then go ahead and get a 10 millimeter socket and run those down. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always email me at bundysgarage at gmail.com. And uh, if you like this, please subscribe to my channel. Like always, I'll keep them rolling for you.